We've spent several days discussing how to find probabilities of discrete distributions where the results are countable. But probabilities with continuous distributions become a little bit more interesting. That's going to be the question we look at is how do we find probabilities of continuous distributions. Because if it's continuous, we've got to consider every possibility. Between 1 and 2, there are an infinite number of decimals, and we can't add the individual probabilities. So instead, we're going to steal a concept from calculus that says that the probability is simply the same thing as the area under a curve. A really simple example of what I mean by this to help us visualize is probability distribution functions or density functions can be expressed as an equation. Maybe f of x equals 1 half of x. That is a probability distribution function. Probability. with results that are possible from 0 to 2. Here's what I mean by that. If we were to graph f of x equals 1 half of x, we would know that has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of rise 1, run 2. And so this line going from 0 to 2 represents the probability dis distribution function, or the density function. And the probabilities are just going to be the area underneath that line. Remember that if we take the, the probability of all of our possibilities, they have to add up to 1. Well, if I were to calculate the area of this triangle, as it turns out to be, we know areas for triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. Well, the base is 2 wide, and the height is 1 high. So 1 half times 2 times 1 equals 1.00. The total area of this triangle is 1.0, just like the total probability of all the possible outcomes is 1.00. So now we could find the probability that maybe our random variable x is less than 1. What we're really looking for is 1's here in the middle. If I were to shade the area less than 1 on this triangle, we end up with this smaller triangle on the left side here. Well, the probability that it's less than 1 is the area under the curve that is less than 1, which is still a triangle. So the probability is the triangle area, 1 half times the base. Well, the base is 1 long, times the height. And if I were to draw this to scale, you'd see the height was exactly 0 And so 1 half times 1 times 0 0.05, we'd end up with an area of 0.25, meaning there's a 25% probability that I'm between 0 and 1 on this triangle. Now, this f of x equals 1 half x probability density function, I made it up. It's fake. It doesn't model anything. But it does show us kind of how this idea works that probability is the area under the curve. The curve can be any shape as long as the total area under it is 1. 
because that's the total probability that is equal to 1. So rather than dealing with a fake triangle, let's deal with a real probability density function. One that we do use is called the uniform distribution. And the uniform distribution is a distribution where all outcomes are equally likely. I could get any number with basically equal probability. The distribution itself has a special notation, just like the Poisson and the binomial did. When we have a uniform distribution, we will say x tilde, or x is uniformly distributed, u, between a and b, where a is the low number and b is the high number. So if we're going anywhere from 5 to 10 with equal probability, the numbers a and b would be 5 and 10. Now, the curve that we want to be underneath for the uniform is f of x equals the reciprocal of the difference, or 1 over b minus a. And when we do that, what we'll end up with is a rectangle that goes from a to b where they're all equally likely to occur. And that height on that line is how likely it's to occur, that 1 over b minus a. If I were to find the area of this rectangle, because it's a rectangle, area is base times height. So the area is the base. The distance between the two, we have to subtract them, is b minus a. And the height, that's the green height that we just calculated, is 1 over b minus a. And those b minus a's divide out. So the total area is 1.0. So the curve, the height of the rectangle for a uniform distribution is the reciprocal of the difference, 1 over b minus a. Now, just like the discrete distributions, we can find the mean or the expected value. And the formula for that with the uniform is just a plus b divided by 2, or the average of the extremes. That's going to stick us right in the middle to find the mean. Turns out the standard deviation is equal to the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12. And it's always divided by 12 regardless of the numbers. Just works out that way. So let's try an example of this and see if we can see this uniform distribution work out. For example, a plumber estimates that service calls are uniformly distributed. between half an hour, or 0.5 hours, and 8 hours. First, let's describe the distribution. We said our random variable x was going to be distributed uniformly. The smallest number possible is 0.5. The largest number possible is 8. So our distribution is x tilde u 0.5, 8. 
we can easily then calculate the mean or expected value and standard deviation using the formulas from the uniform distribution. The mean is the average 0.5 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 8.5 divided by 2, which is 4.25 hours. So this plumber's average service call is about 4 and a quarter hours, 4 hours, 15 minutes. The standard deviation on those service calls is the square root of b minus a, 8 minus 0.5, squared divided by 12. When we put that into our calculator, we should end up with a standard deviation of 2.165 hours. So now that we know his average call and or service call and, and standard deviation, let's actually calculate some probabilities. And what you'll find with calculating probabilities on continuous distributions, it's always easier to draw a picture of the situation. So if we want to find the probability a call takes less than three hours. We're going to draw a picture of the probability. It's a uniform distribution, so we know it's a rectangle from a low of 0.5 all the way up to 8. The height is that f of x equals 1 over b minus a or 1 over 8 minus 0.5, 1 over 7.5. And we can leave that decimal in there. That's OK. Now, it's asking for us to find the probability that we're actually less than 3. Remember, probability is area. So if I mark on my graph approximately where 3 is, and we want to be less than 3, it's going to be the area of this rectangle off to the left. So the probability that x is less than 3 is the area of the rectangle, base times height. The base is the distance from 3 to 0.5, or 3 minus 0.5. And the height is what we just found out, the f of x, the 1 over 7.5. And when I put this into my calculator, 3 minus 0.5 in parentheses times 1 over 7.5, we end up with 0.3333, or about a one-third probability that the service call takes less than three hours. Let's try another example. Let's find the probability. A call takes between 2 and 4 hours. Again, probabilities are always easier if you draw a picture. So here's our uniform probability. It doesn't have to be to scale, but it does show the low is 0.5, the high is 0.8. The height is still 1 over 7.5. But now I want to be between 2 and 4 hours. So between 2 and 4 hours, we're going to shade that area in between. We're looking for the probability that 2 is less than x, which is less than 4, which is just this rectangle. The rectangle is base times height. The base is the space from 2 to 4, or 4 minus 2, times the height, which is 1 over 7.5.
putting that in my calculator, 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 7.5. We get an area of 0.2667 when we round. So there's about a 26 and 2 thirds percent probability that a call will take between 2 and 4 hours. We can even find conditional probabilities in much the same way. Let's find the probability a call takes more than five hours given it was less than seven hours. Again, we're going to draw a picture going from 0.5 to 8 with a height of 1 over 7.5. But now I want to be more than 5 given it was less than 7. So we don't really care about this right side. We just want to be less than 7. And we want to know what's the probability that I'm more than 5, given that I'm less than 7. The probability that x is more than 5, given x is less than 7. Well, with a given probability, we know we look at the probability of both divided by the probability of the given information. So the probability of both would be between 5 and 7. So between 5 and 7 has a base of 7 minus 5 times a height of 1 over 7.5. That's the both. And then we divide by the probability of the given information. The given information is that we're less than 7. So that probability has got a base going all the way down of 7 minus 0 0.5 times a height of 1 over 7.5, which is kind of nice. As often occurs with given probabilities, part of it will divide out. And so we're left with 7 minus 5 is 2 over 7 minus 0.5 is 6.5. And 2 divided by 6.5 is 0.3077. There's just over a 30% probability the call took more than five hours, given we knew it was less than seven hours. Another concept that we haven't spent much time with is the idea of what's called a percentile. A percentile is the is the value where a certain percent is below the value. You often see this with standardized test scores. If you took a test and you scored in the 80th percentile, that means your score was better than 80% of the participants. So we could find for our example, uh, let's find the 80th percentile, or what value has 80% below it. Let's draw a picture. Same picture. It's a uniform distribution, so it's just a big rectangle. The height is still 1 over 7.5, and we're going from 0.5 to 8. But we want to know what value, let's call it k for now, will give us an area that's 0.80 below it. 80% is below it. What value gives us that? 
Well, to get there, we're going to use our area formula, the fact that we know that area of a rectangle is base times height. The difference is this time, we know the area. We know the area is 0.80. The base is the distance from k down to 0.5. So we'll have k minus 0.5 is the base. And the height we know is 1 over 7.5. All we really need to do now is solve this equation for k, and that solution will be our 80th percentile, the value that has 80% of service calls below it. First, we can get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by 7.5. That's going to give us 6 equals k minus 0.5. Add 0.5 to both sides, and k is equal to 6.5. This means that 80% of service calls are less than 6.5 hours. That's what it means to be the 80th percentile. Now, as we wrap up, there's one more example I want to show you. It's kind of a special case, and it seems counterintuitive. We want to find what is the probability a call takes exactly five hours. And the key word here is exactly. Because that means something very specific in probability. It doesn't mean between 5 hours and 5 hours, 0 minutes, and 1 second. It means at the exact moment of 5 hours. Let's draw a picture to represent the exact moment of 5 hours. Going from 0.5 to 8, and a height of 1 over 7.5, the exact moment of 5 hours occurs somewhere in the middle. Well, the probability that x equals exactly 5 is going to be whatever the base is times the height. The problem is the base of that rectangle, since it's just a line right at 5 hours with no width, the base goes from 5 to 5 with the height of 1 over 7.5. But 5 minus 5 is 0. And anything times 0 is? 0. The probability that anything happens at exactly a specific moment in a continuous distribution is always equal to 0. Nothing ever happens at an exact moment. That always happens over a span of time. It could be between 5 hours and 5 hours and 1 second. But that's a span of time. At exactly a specific number, that will never occur in a continuous distribution. Seems like a paradox, but it's the way it works out. We're focusing, though, today on finding probabilities off the uniform distribution and this idea with continuous distributions that probability is area under the curve. So take a look at the assignment to practice a few of these, and we will see you in class to continue working with the uniform distribution.